Hello, welcome to Devil's Advocate. How does the Italian government defend its handling of the Marines issue? That's the key subject I shall explore today with the country's Deputy Foreign Minister, Stefan Di Mestiera. Minister, let me start with a simple question. Can you now accept today that your government has badly mishandled the Marines issue and you've ended up tying yourself in knots? <laughs> well, let's put it like this. It has been a very complicated issue from the very beginning. And we have made, all of us, quite a lot of mistakes. But the main mistake that you've made is that in a short period of 11 days, your government has ended up taking three different positions. You first guaranteed that the Marines would come back by the 22nd of March, then you said they wouldn't, and now you've had to hasten to bring them back before the deadline. Every time one turned the newspaper, it seemed the Italian government was taking a different position. Your dates were totally correct. Let me elaborate why and how. And perhaps there will be a logic, although, you know, in politics and in emotions, logic sometimes needs to be explained. Point number one, the Italians, the, the ambassador and the two Marines gave the word. Our word is a very important endeavor, like for you. Can I interrupt? And that word was supported by an affidavit saying that the ambassador was speaking on behalf of the government. Exactly. So the government gave its word. Exactly. So the statement was correct and the commitment was correct. The two Marines, through a very gracious decision, I must say, by the Supreme Court, went to Italy. What happens afterwards? Well, during that period when they were in Italy, there was the indication that there was going to be established a special court. That was the first early warning. Put yourself in Italy for a moment. No, Minister, you're wrong on facts. The indication that a special court was going to be established didn't happen when the Marines were in Italy. It happened on the 18th of January when the Supreme Court in India so ruled well before the Marines went. Correct. So but check, check, please, check on one point. At least we, you know, what we got. The Supreme Court decided on the 18th of January that there should be a special court and in fact almost reprimanded that there was delay on it. During the period of the bail, the so-called open bail, there was an indication, let me just specify, that's what made the difference, that the court was going to be established. In other words, there were the first moves. Go back to Italy, please, wait a moment, and think about one issue. At that time, at that time, the feeling that the special court was becoming a reality became immediate. At that time... But then it's even more bizarre that if it became immediate that the special court was becoming a reality and that was the feeling in Italy, why then did you choose not to send the Marines back? Let's Instead of saying, <laughs> they're so happy the special court is happening and we will definitely send our boys back, you did exactly the opposite. So your explanation contradicts with what you did. The feeling and the perception in Italy, based on a very strong law in Italy, is if a court which is being established in a country where there is even far away the possibility of capital punishment, immediately we have laws too, and you have to accept those. That law was stopping even a foreigner, not an Italian, even a foreigner to be allowed to go to a country when he could have been indicted and capital punishment could have been taken. That's the time when exceptionally, exceptionally, and trust me, it was a very difficult decision, Minister, the word given was suspended, painfully, but suspended. Minister, actually, once again, the facts don't match up with your suspicion or your fear that your Marines could have been exposed to the death penalty because in December, when they were permitted to go back and they then returned in January, they faced charges in the Kerala High Court, which arguably, although perhaps exaggeratedly, could have led to the death penalty. And yet, despite that, they came back. In February, when they went, the Kerala High Court case had been quashed. There were no charges against them. Therefore, there was no question of facing a death penalty at that point in time. And suddenly, you dreamt up the death penalty as an excuse to not send them back. So when it should have been an explanation for not sending them back, you sent them back. When it shouldn't have been an explanation, you dreamt it up as an excuse and didn't send them back. That's why people in India say it's been mishandled. Well, let me continue then. That is true. But what true the facts you describe, what you don't have in your own picture is the fact that for us, when we learned that the Supreme Court had decided something, and we respect the Supreme Court, it's the highest standing in India. Let me please You finish. can't say you respect the Supreme Court when you put yourself in the position both as a government and your own ambassador was personally put in that position of going back on a solemn undertaking. You can't respect the court and then go back on a solemn undertaking to the same court. Well, if I can continue. 
once the Supreme Court established a totally new court, which had already agreed, the Supreme Court, that in Kerala they had made a mistake in for one single year, one whole year, to handle this issue, and they could not even handle the Supreme Court this issue, they decided to establish a totally new court. That became reality during that period. I'm just explaining the reasons then you may contradict. Once the real feeling was that this new court, serious court, last court, the only court according to you, and rightly perhaps because this is a unique case, never happened before, then we came up, perhaps emotionally, but we also have emotions, about our own law about capital punishment. And that provoked the suspension of the affidavit. Can I give you another reason? No, no. Can, I, can, I pause you? Can, I, can, I, can I pause you there? I Think for a course. moment what the situation that emerged as a result of what you're saying to me. You ended up putting your government and your ambassador in a position where for a fairly long period it looked as if they had lied to the Supreme Court. You affronted Indian opinion publicly across the board. Worst of all, you've now ended up in a situation where in Rome, your own opposition and your own press is ridiculing you. Il Giornale says that you betrayed Italy. Senator Maurizio Gaspari says the whole incident was ineptly conducted and you've exposed your own country to ridicule. So you've got the worst of both worlds in India and at home. Your government has lost out every way. I'm not sure about that. From our point of view, and that's a national felt point, capital punishment is a blockage. We have then obtained from the Indian authorities a written statement which came in time for reassuring that point and we then decided, as we should have done, on that basis there is no reason to not respect a word given. And they returned with me here. Except, Minister, if you had consulted any lawyer, you would have discovered that this case would never have been considered by any court as the rarest of the rare and therefore it would never have qualified for the death penalty. Harish Salve, who was your lawyer until last week, would have given you that reassurance at the drop of a hat. So this concern that you had, that if your boys were sent back they would face the death penalty, is a fig leaf. It's not a real concern. That's why I say, your explanation doesn't wash with the Indian public. It does wash with us anyway, because you have to come to Italy and see what does it mean. A special court the word special is quite worrisome, but we understand why you're doing it. A special court, which has not clearly stated in its own constitution, is not yet there, that death penalty would not be applicable. Now, you may say any lawyer would have told you the contrary. Probably. But we have a law. And our law says, if anyone can imagine then Italian why did you military... Then them back in December or January? Because the special court had not yet been established. The other laws, we knew they were, we had one higher up, one higher up, one higher up. And you still proved, and the Supreme Court very rightly decided that Kerala had made a major then mistake. Can I, can I add? So we were waiting for the last resort, a new resort, and we needed to have guarantees. In which I case, think Minister, we have the right to in, in which case, Minister, yes. when you, on the 11th of March, informed the Indian government that the Marines weren't coming back, why didn't you give this as your reason? Because the reason you gave at that time had nothing to do with your fear and concern of the death penalty, nor did it have anything to do with the fact that the whole process of setting up the special court was taking time, which is what you said at your press conference in India the other day. The reason you gave on the 11th of March was that, in fact, a dispute had been created between the two governments because the note verbal of the 6th of March had not been responded to by the 11th. In other words, the government had taken five days and you felt that, therefore, it was too long and a dispute had come into being. Nothing to do with the death penalty, nothing to do with the days of said. That's why people say these are excuses that have been dreamt up after the event. The reality is that it was in it. What you cannot identify, because letters don't speak for themselves, is the emotional aspect of the word death penalty. For a military on its duty, like they were, that was brewing inside the feeling that that was the no. You know what people say? People turn around and say, it wasn't fear of the death penalty that was the reason why the Marines weren't sent back originally. It wasn't the delay that worried them. What really worried the Italians is pressure. One, you realized that the European Union wasn't going to stand behind you as you wanted them on this issue. And secondly, perhaps as the Hindustan Times today claims, mm. you were scared that $12 billion worth of defense deals might fall by the wayside, and that's important for your economy. Economic pressure and political pressure ensured that the Italian government, and forgive this word, buckled under pressure and sent the Marines back. 
Well, that's a little bit unfair, frankly. Secondly, they were sent back to their own embassy, as you know, because they are here. They are not being sent to a jail. Thirdly, it uh, is true that uh, we treasure a lot our relation with India. But then and how I'm sure, and I'm sure, and I'm sure that India feels the same. We have such a long tradition, not only of business, but of culture, of being together on it. And I am convinced that what happened, unfortunately, a year ago, more than a year ago, off the shore of international waters of Kerala, is something that is painfully handled by us and by the Indian authorities. So we do want, and I don't deny, we want a solution, a diplomatic solution, in the respect of the judiciary, both in India and in Italy, and above all, for our own emotions. I do feel sorry, and I know, and I went to see the families of the fishermen. Last but, year. Of course. But, but, and but I, let's not And I also feel the how much the emotions have been taking place in India. I, but do understand Minister, Minister, all the emotions I fully emotions understand that, and I fully Thank understand you. the emotions in Italy. I'm not simply questioning you toughly from the standpoint of an Indian audience that is skeptical and cynical of why suddenly you've changed your mind, why you've done three flip-flops over this whole issue. I also notice that the Italian press and Italian politicians are critical of you. Angelino Alfano, the secretary of the Freedom Party, says we have lost credibility both nationally and internationally. Il Giornale says you've betrayed Italy. The questions I'm asking you are echoing in Rome even louder and more critically. Suddenly, you've lost as an embassy credibility in India. As a government, you've lost credibility at all. Don't you feel that on reflection, this should have been, could have been better handled? Okay. I feel that we all could have better handled this whole issue. I started with that. I feel that the Supreme Court was very correct in saying that for one year, Kerala should have not handled it. It's such a complex international issue. I feel that on our side, we should have been more careful with emotions. Let me address those Did politicians. You explain Let those me explain to you one point that you rightly said. You mentioned some politicians in Italy. We are in a post-electoral mood. I'm sure in India, too, there must have been some critical moves. That is human, normal. We should be critical of anything, but what we give as a priority, notwithstanding mistakes done by every side, is to try to find a fair solution and make sure that the Indian position is well respected and our position is well understood and respected. Let me flip the discussion. Up till now I've put pressure on you and tried to expose what I think are false or inept handling on the Italian side. Tell me honestly. Where did the Indian government let you down? Where do you think the Indian government was slow or inept or perhaps not as forthcoming as it should be? You see, in this program, I presume you should have been the attacker, I should have been the defender. I'm asking you to yeah, now reverse the uh, Yes, but I, am, I have a lot of respect for the Indian government and for the Indian people. And our relation has been always very strong. So let me, instead of saying where they made a mistake, rather say what we could have done better. If you allow me to answer Absolutely. to your point. Give me three points the Indians could have done better. Certainly. But I will also tell you, if you want, what we could have done better, no, if you want. Stick to the Indians for now. Good. First, we should have been able, at the beginning, to realize that the Kerala judges, the Kerala atmosphere, was in fact, as the Supreme Court has indicated, the wrong place for handling an extremely complicated case. In other second, words, the Supreme Court took too long to come to that conclusion. It should have come to that conclusion. I was coming to the second point, but you said it. We have been waiting 11 months. And you got frustrated? We got emotions coming up. We too have families. We too, like you, trust our military should be defended when they are on duty. Even and if India did not understand that. Well, they didn't act on it. And therefore, luckily, Supreme Court belatedly, and in law fairness, did so. They should have done it much earlier. We would have been able to find some formula much earlier. What made the Italians terribly frustrated was the feeling that per per perhaps there was a strategy of prolonging this. And I'm sure uh, it was what not. what would have lied behind that strategy? We don't know. Political you thought, in other words, you were being lured into some sort of trap? No, but that we could have been, perhaps, falling into an agenda of Kerala-related political environment, which is human. Like you are quoting the, some people Did you raise these Italy. concerns with the Indian government? Did you raise it with the South Bloc, the Foreign Office? I would not elaborate, frankly, on my discussion with the Indian authority. I think it's up to them to elaborate. I have respect for their position. But let me tell you the third mistake, if I may, or the third moment. 
The third one would have been that while we all feel that we should find a solution, we should have been also perhaps in a position of discussing without negotiating. I recognize negotiations is not an issue when you have serious things like two people died dead and two military on it. But we should have been together perhaps finding a way through which analyzing what does it mean when two military on official duty on international waters make a mistake or not, probably, perhaps not. In other words, the two sides should have got together, put their heads together and try and understand the situation better. Bravo, because it's been unheard of. The last okay. case of something similar to that was perhaps in 1912. Minister, let's take a break at that point. When I come back, I want to turn to certain unanswered questions that perhaps could be answered definitively today. That's in a moment's time. See you after this. Welcome back to Devil's Advocate and an exclusive interview with the Italian Deputy Foreign Minister Stefan De Mastiera. Let me put to you two concerns from the Indian side and ask whether you agree with them. Given that this incident in February last year clearly happened, outside Indian territorial waters. It happened some 22 miles away from the Kerala coast. Correct. Given that by the time the Indian authorities found out about it, the Enrico Lexi, the Enrico Lexi was already 30 miles and therefore clearly in the high seas. Why did your captain come back to Cochin? Okay. The theory is that he was lured back or brought back on some grounds of deception. Can you confirm that? I can tell you what I know, rather than confirming, because I hope the Indian side will discover that. Point number one, all what you said is correct, he was there. Point number two, he returned not inside national waters because he was never in national waters, but I will quote instead, I think, a senior official of the Kerala police who actually very proudly said, we have lured them in. Then the question- We have lured them, them in. in. Yes, he said so. So I'm quoting an Indian policeman from Kerala. Point Question you should ask me. Can I can I interrupt? No, can no, I interrupt? Can no, I interrupt? Because me. this is so important. But I have a point. I, I'll come back to you. The theory in India, and I want you to confirm yeah. or deny it for me, yeah. is that in fact when Indian authorities contacted the captain of the Enrico Lexi, he was told that there had been a piracy incident and they required him to come and cooperate on friendly terms. He agreed to do so, believing that he was simply coming to cooperate, and then found the two of his marines were arrested. In other words, he was, as you say, lured and the basis was a deception. Can you confirm that? Yes, I can. Now, can I continue? The question you perhaps should ask me, but I don't want to do your job, is uh, why did he actually return on that basis? For the reason you just said. That he had a clean yeah, conscience. He had, bravo, you said it. All right. He felt he had clean conscience, so did the Marines. Let me actually said, yes, we did shoot at what we perceived or believed were pirates. Let so from that now, point of view, that was the beginning of when things started becoming complicated. Two quick questions, and then we're going to come to the end of this interview. Now that the Marines are back, now that the government has assured you that the special court on which it seemed to be dragging its feet will be set up expeditiously, clearly the Marines will be tried there. If they are found guilty and if they are sentenced, will they serve term in an Indian jail? Or will you seek at that point to ensure that they serve their sentence in Italy? I cannot elaborate on this at this stage. I'm not a judge, neither are you. What I can tell you is that we are taking into account very strongly the fact that the Supreme Court has decided, your Supreme Court, and we respect it, that there would be a new special court because the case is so complicated and heard of. What we are asking if that takes place, and it should take place, because it has been decided by the Supreme Court, should be fast, quick, expedient. But you won't tell me whether the Marines, if sentenced, will serve in an Indian jail. At the same time, we maintain our position, and I would like to restate it, while respecting the Supreme Court, we are in India, that in our position, military should be judged in our own country. And by the okay. way, we discussed it the other day, you remember? The other Indian day was military, last year. Yes, the other day was yeah. last year. The but Indian military would have done exactly what we are doing. Very possibly. And you know that very, very well. But I'm I know not, it too. Very possibly, but I'm not questioning you as an Indian versus an Italian, although I'm an Indian, I'm questioning you as a journalist yes. who naturally is skeptical and is doubting. And I want to end by asking you about your boss, Foreign Minister Terzi, who gave an interview to La Repubblica yesterday where he claims astonishingly that Italy deliberately created this crisis to negotiate better conditions for the Marines and to guarantee that the death penalty would not apply to them. Does he really mean that or is that just a sad fig leaf to cover his embarrassment? 
I would ask you to ask him this because I arrived last day, before yesterday evening, as you know, late, before actually being able to talk to anyone. What I can tell you is that I confirm that what was the breakthrough of all this was the assurance by the Indian authorities, very correctly, that no death penalty would be applicable. The only thing, Minister, as I've said many times before, that assurance could have been obtained much earlier. You didn't need to gamble or create a crisis for it. And secondly, your boys went home and came back in January when there was no such assurance. It's so odd that they needed one this time around. That's why I end by saying, in Indian eyes, a lot of damage has happened to the good name of Italy. A country that we looked upon, or India looked upon as a close friend, they now look upon with suspicion. Don't you regret that? I do. And we all regret it. And I'm sure you regret it too, as I can see. But let's look forward. First of all, yesterday I met the, Dep the Foreign Minister of India. We decided together that the crisis is over. Do you mean that? The crisis is over? Uh, definitely. We love the relationship we always had between India and Italy. We want to settle the issue, start again, use the diplomatic approach in our dialogue, I'm not saying negotiation, I, I, and go forward now. I, I'm glad we're ending on a positive note. We began quarrelsomely, but at least we're sorting out some of the issues. My last question. If this issue ends with the Marines being tried, found guilty and sentenced, will we have another crisis? I can't speak for the Italian people, for the emotions. I can only tell you one thing. We have to find a quick formula solution for this issue because the two countries deserve definitely more than simply having a crisis. Stefan de Mestura, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Same here.